Let's talk about something you've probably experienced and not even realized it. It might not have even been while you were playing games. It's when you're in the zone, getting things done, feeling good about it. Hi folks, I'm Josh. Let's explore this state of mind called flow in games and how it can make them more enjoyable. I've invited my mate Weasel from Weasel Zone to help explain what flow is. What is flow? Flow is a mental state of concentration where your abilities are tested. But it's more than that and can be difficult to describe fully. Each person will experience it while doing different things depending on what they enjoy and what they're good at. Because of this, it's been explored by philosophers and psychologists and you can feel it while doing almost anything. Daily work, exercise, sexy times and video games. Pick your favorite. In the Eastern philosophy of Taoism, it's Wu Wei or non-doing and psychologist Csikszentmihalyi described it as being completely involved in an activity for its own sake. The ego falls away, time flies, every action, movement and thought follows inevitably from the previous one. Like playing jazz. Your whole being is involved and you're using your skills to the utmost. It's about effortless reaction to an evolving situation. Relaxing because you know the task is possible. Fun because you're making progress and not boring because it's too easy. So you can see why games are great places to experience flow. I should point out that it's not the same as being addicted or spending too much time playing. Even though people in flow can be focusing so much on what you're doing, the time slips by. Some evil games use the dirty trick of keeping the completion of your goal just out of reach so that you keep on playing even though you're not enjoying it so that you watch more ads or buy in and then purchases. But that's a topic for another day. So how does it work? There are a few things that flow relies on to get you in the mood and keep you there. There's a very thin line that games walk between boredom and anxiety that some people smarter than me plotted on this graph. Other emotions do exist, your mileage may vary. There is a point at which the player's skill meets the difficulty of the game that is just right for a person to go into flow. Too easy and the player will get bored. Too difficult and the player will get anxious or really angry and give up. When the player knows they can complete the challenge set to them, it also implies that they have something else important to flow. A goal. Something to strive towards. If a task is just beyond what the player is comfortable, but not too far so they know it's impossible, then the challenge is right. You can see this all the time in great platforming leaps of faith that the game has prepared you for ahead of time, but still leave you wondering whether you can make it. A player's actions in flow can be quite quick. So to keep up with them and to make sure they don't get confused or interrupted, they need informative feedback. Within about 300 milliseconds of the player inputting an action, the simulation needs to have an answer if the reaction has to feel instant. This isn't just important for quick games, but even slow, considered games need to keep the player informed that their actions have been received and are being acted upon somehow. It's all part of a cycle between the player and the simulation that goes Goal I want to pick up that onion Action Let's press the onion picker upper button Simulation Bleep bloop onion goes to hand Feedback You now have the onion Reaction Yay I now have the onion Which then starts the cycle from the beginning Tons of these little decisions are made every second, except the thought processes aren't quite as explicit as in this example. What games use flow well? Personal preference is what dictates the flow games of choice for each person, so obviously when I asked Twitter what does it for them, I got some interesting and varied answers. Great examples of games with continuous action to focus on, like the combat system from Batman Arkham series, bouncing from one villain to the next. There's Oli Oli, rhythm games like Necrodancer and Step Mania. The most interesting answers, however, were Mini Metro, a minimalistic strategy game that slowly grows in complexity, and Papers Please, 
which I found to be stressful, but clearly Christine's observational skills are greater than mine. As I said earlier, the games that people get into flow with depends on their skills and preferences. Despite the many examples of fast-paced games here that create flow because they require a lot of concentration, a more meditative, slower-paced flow is possible. Speed is not necessary for flow. My personal choice, and the game I'm going to go deep into how it works, is Downwell. It's a tough, roguelike platformer in which its designer, Ojiro Fumoto, has made a lot of little decisions that nudge people towards a state of flow. The player's long-term goal is to go down the well, simple to remember and manage. Reaching the end of the level is a nice way of breaking this down into manageable chunks, but the most important part of this goal is that it's unavoidable. Gravity pulls you towards it and while you can delay this by shooting your gun boots or standing on a platform, the effort to complete the goal is low. I have another video that goes into depth on the parts of the gameplay this affects, but let's just say this makes it easier to manage your decisions as you fall. The good thing about falling is that it constantly brings you into new situations that challenge you just enough no matter what way you approach them. Here, the game tackles the challenge skill graph we saw earlier. What it does better than most games is provide multiple routes through this graph to cater for varying skill levels. The option to pick your battles and rush past the obstacles that might give you trouble are rewarded with progress to the next level. If you're more comfortable, then jumping and shooting on enemies is fun and gets you more gems as you progress. The most rewarding and difficult option is combos. The combo system added a new depth to the game. It basically gave the game a higher difficulty option for the more experienced players. Instead of shooting enemies to kill them, if they have white tops, they can be dispatched with one hit by bouncing on their heads. Do this enough times without touching the floor, then you get extra gems, then gun boot upgrades, then extra health. It requires a thorough understanding of the game, and for the player to learn to use the gun boots not just for shooting enemies, but for manoeuvring around as you fall. Trying to keep the combo account meant that the player had to constantly utilize the gun boots to avoid ground and accurately adjust self-placement. It made the game be even more fast-paced and gave the player even more reasons to be shooting from gun boots. Ojiro Fumoto was even doing this before the combo system existed. During playtesting the later builds, I found myself trying to consistently land on the enemies, basically doing the combos without the system actually implemented, simply because it was the most fun way to be playing the game. All of these are just incentives to try out these methods of playing the game. They would be worthless if the second-to-second -second decisions the player has to make about where to move, when to shoot and who to avoid were dull or stressful. These three different ways of playing the same levels widen the gap between anxiety and boredom so that all players can find their own challenge and fun. So how can you induce it in your game? Make the rules clear to the player or at least allow them to learn the boundaries of your game easily. Make the goals clear. They don't have to know exactly why they're doing what they're doing all the time in a narrative sense. If they do, that can help but as long as their short-term task is understandable, then they'll know how to work towards it. Continually evolve that challenge as time progresses. Keep the challenge within the difficulty boundaries. It's hard because there are a lot of people with different skill levels at each point in the game. You can expand the flow zone by adding player decisions that affect the difficulty. Don't interrupt. I said don't interrupt. I mean, there are times... There are times when a goal is complete, so it makes a lot of sense to offer a breakpoint, because it's the player's choice. But pop-up messages while you're doing something are just jarring. Something I want to discuss in the comment response video to this is what games get you into flow and how? What do you feel you gain from the zone? If you make games, do you do it with flow in mind? Let me know in the comments or on Reddit and we'll talk about the best answers 
and pick the next game design topic in the comments response video next week. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this show possible and to Weasel for lending his sexy voice. But until next time, mustache. So uh, what helps you flow, Weasel? Tits. Titty tit tits. Titty tits. <laughs>